Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. Today we're just going to make a really, really small, quick video on the final part of functions. Now, as I said before, functions can be a lot more complicated than I've shown you right now. And I want you to experiment and, and check for other examples online and my other videos where I make functions and I make games and you can see how functions are really useful. And now, uh, one place functions, like I said, uh, that they're going to be really useful is going to be when it comes to classes where you have functions in your classes that you can call and they'll be really complicated and lots of stuff will happen in them but all you have to do is call a name when you want all that stuff to happen but basically one problem you can have is when you're just writing it like this in main files which you often will not do you'll have separate files for your functions and everything will be separated and easy to use and you'll include them uh, from separate files and you can call the functions because that's basically what we're doing when we're calling something like get line that's a function and it has in parameters std sin and you can put put in a something it should um, input into it's a function but where is it it's not defined here right it's not defined here it is defined in the um, in the library iostream now you can make your own files where you kind of just uh, include include when you include your own files and not standard library files we'll talk about this later you don't have to think about it too much my file dot h that's how you're gonna write it and then you'll include your functions and stuff from that file and you can call them here whatever the functions name is but that is for another video right now what we're talking about is how to kind of split up your functions if you're writing it in the same file as your main which again you will not do that often but I'll show you anyway so we'll create something called a function prototype now if you remember what I said before a function header is basically the return type uh, return type name and the input parameters just like that right the prototype is the function header that is the prototype but there is no body to the prototype there is a semicolon direct directly after the header and the body is then defined below the main function now this is a way to kind of tell your computer right up here that these are the functions that exist in our program and they're defined below so one problem programmers have is that if you have an int my function here and you have a bunch of code in here like a thousand lines and then you have a thousand functions with a thousand lines it's really annoying to come down to your main and just see what functions you have and it's really annoying when you don't have this uh, kind of what do you call it kind of minimize functionality in your compiler because you might might as well write this in a notepad document then you don't you can't do this so if you have a thousand lines in here you can't just minimize it you'll have to go through the whole file all the way down to your main to code now you don't want to do that you want to just do this my funk like this and then you write that again my funk you define it this is the function definition and this is the function prototype this just tells the computer above main before it starts in main that this function exists whenever this is called uh, it will jump down to the definition now this is the prototype prototype and this is the definition just like that now it still has a function head and a function body don't get it confused but this whole thing is the definition and this thing is not the function head it looks like it but it's not it's the prototype because it doesn't have a body afterwards this is the definition with a head and a body these have to have the same name if this is func2 this thing is gonna be green it's gonna expect a definition somewhere function definition for my func not found because this is the definition for my func1 this will not work either if I call my func1 here it sh will not work it should not work I'm pretty sure it should not work no, it did not work my func1 identifier not found because it's defined after it's called this is the call okay and this is defined after it so it doesn't exist here yet it exists down here but if you write my func1 up here 
it won't complain because it should co not complain. Okay, it should. It wants a return value. Uh, return zero, whatever. Um, just like that. Now it ran without an issue. Okay, system uh, pause, just like that. It ran without an issue because we prototyped it up here. We said that there is a function that exists with this name. Whenever it's called, it will go down and look for it, and it found it, and it executed the code in here. And I'll just do std cout hello from my funk one end line. Again, don't use couts and stuff in functions. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now we can return, remove the return, and just call it void because that's all we need right now. We're not returning anything, no input parameters, nothing. It's just printing out this. So when I call it, it will say hello from my funk one like that. Now what if I have another prototype for the same function? That will not work, obviously. You don't want that. You want another prototype for my funk 2. Then you have to give it a definition as well. My funk 2. Now the order doesn't really matter here at all. Doesn't really matter. My funk 2 can be above my funk 1. It'll still work as long as it has its prototype up here. So my funk 2 is now defined. So hello from my funk 2. So if I call my funk2 up here, that's going to be my funk1, my funk2. Easy peasy lemon squeezy straight up straight up check it out. That's how we roll. Easy. I hope you know what this means now. I don't really think we need to go too far with these functions. Other than just remember that this is a way to let you code a little easier, make huge functions down here, and just prototype them up here, and you'll be fine. Another place where this will be really useful is because you have when you create a class, you always create prototypes for it in a class, and then you define it in another file, and that just splits up your class and your program, makes it a lot easier to handle, and then you can call those class functions in here. We'll talk about that later. Don't freak out. Don't worry. We'll talk about that later. As long as you remember that this will be used in functions later. It's really important to learn. Now, just to show you one final example, let's make a float. Let's make a float uh, my multi my division func, and we'll give it float one, float a, and float b, and it returns a a float. And it takes in two floats as parameters. Okay. Now, one thing that's important to note here: when this is a prototype, you don't have to give it variable na names right up here for the parameters. All this prototype wants to know is what types we're dealing with right now. What are the types? Okay. What are the types? When you get down to the definition it will expect two floats in the definition. So I want to copy this name here. And float is what the doctor ordered. Now here float A and float B are important in the definition because we obviously have to return A divided by B. We're going to return that value. And we can make more things like this is how functions can become bigger. If A equals zero or b equals a zero um, return zero point f otherwise it will return the result now I'll explain this just give me a second the reason we didn't have a and b here because this is just a prototype all this tells the computer is that there is a function called my division func that returns a float expects two floats in the parameters go to the definition to check out the parameter names so it will jump to the definition and here it's important to say a and b because we're going to use them in the definition here of the function obviously so if we didn't have a and b here how were we to use these two values there's no way so we need to use that here but here you don't have to specify the names but i still will it's good to just to know what uh, this this might be you can give them better names uh, div divisor and uh, I don't know what it's called uh, right now, so I won't do that. But you know, for example, this could be the divisor, this could be the whatever's on top, uh, and it will be easier to just know what's going on here instead of A and B. 
But nevertheless, if a is 0 or b is 0, I'll return 0, and that's an error. Or a, I don't think the top thing, division by 0 is illegal. So b is the bottom number. Is the So b if b is 0, we'll return 0. Otherwise, we'll go ahead with this. Now, remember what I said before. This exits exits function and so does this but how can we have two return statements basically if b is 0 then we'll return 0 then we'll end the function it will never come down to here but if it's not 0 if, if this is never called then obviously there is no this return function will not be called will be down here this will this will execute and a divided by b will return so you can you can have several return functions but only the first one that is uh, reached will exit the function with that value returned. So what this does is if I do std cout uh, my division func and I'll give it 10.f, 2.f. So this should return a uh, 5 if my math is correct. Let me just see. It's like that. Uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Correct. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, obviously. Uh, 0 divided by 2 should be 0, right? 0. No problems there. Program did not crash. Uh, but if I have a 10 divided by 0, we should just get a 0 here because we handled this problem. We handled it. If b is 0, then it's a division by 0 and we'll return 0. What else you can do here is you can kind of print out something. You can print out uh, a std cout. Now we'll talk about exceptions later and that's better than actually using cout in functions. But we'll talk about that later. Don't worry about that right now. cout div by 0 illegal operation. Now, I handled this problem by printing it out and returning 0. So what happens now? It will say div by 0 illegal operation. It returned 0. And if we have a valid number here, it will not print that out. It will just give me the result. Now, what if I don't have this now, function? We have nothing to check if we're dividing by 0. We'll still do the division. What's going to happen now? inf okay that's just an infant number it's, it's crashed it doesn't work we're not allowed to divide by zero so we got a problem so we didn't handle this issue now one thing you're gonna learn in functions is that you wanna handle a lot of these issues that can revolve around parameters what they can be okay so sometimes there'll be problems that you just need to handle with if statements otherwise you wanna return so this is kinda how functions can become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger you get more and more issues so just remember that I hope you learned something from this video. As usual, I babbled on and on and on, but <laughs> I'm proud of all of you. I really, really love you guys for all the support and everything. You're just sticking out there with me. You're sticking with me. And uh, just keep learning. That's all I want. That's all I wish for. I know my methods aren't the best. They're probably the worst uh, programming teacher on YouTube. But for those of you who find this helpful, I'm really happy. I just keep learning. That's all. Keep working hard. And you reach the highest mountain tops whatever deep talk <laughs> alright but still keep learning keep practicing this try to divide up your functions and take care in the next video I'll try to try to find something about functions if not we'll probably start on some more deep advanced C++ functionality but for now that's it thank you for watching take care and I'll see you in the next one alright bye bye